Welcome to the new episode of uh, Cerena Zvezda uh, official podcast Pick and Talk. Uh, I'm your host, Ivan Minic. This is my colleague, Milan Dozit. And today, uh, our idea is to follow your, your questions and uh, help you get to know our guest, Corey Walden. Welcome, Corey. Thank you. Thank you. For, thank you for having me. Um, it's always chron- chronological when we are trying to explain to the fans what, what's someone's background. So basically, the first question is always for everyone. How did you start playing basketball? Well, I mean, it started with my parents just uh, buying me like a toy hoop to uh, put in our living room. And uh, I just stuck with it. Uh, I mean, I had so much fun playing with it. Um, and then from there, um, my older brother, would always be obsessed with like Michael Jordan. Like uh, at the time it was like VCR, like uh, the tapes, like the VHS uh, tapes. And I I would just sit and watch him. uh, Come play with me. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) one of them. And he would play them over and over and over. And I'm like, I don't know who this guy is. This is Michael Jordan, of course, but I kind of want to be like him. Like he's really, really cool. And I just, I just stuck with it after that. And when did you start playing, you know, outside and, and, and everything? When did you start playing serious basketball? Um, at a really, really young age. Uh, my father is actually a um, like a like a youth coach uh, for for children, and uh, so I started like organized around like eight years old, seven or eight years old, and uh, I, I just stuck with it through AAU you know, travel teams and everything. And so at a really young age, that's when I really started. You're also good uh, in uh, American football. So why did you choose basketball over football? (laughs) Um, It just came a time where um, important tournaments, like travel tournaments for basketball would be coming up. And at the time it was high school, uh, high school football going into like spring or something. And it was really just a, either going to go to this big tournament in front of all of these college coaches or you're going to stay and play football and i, I just i just chose football i mean i chose basketball i'm sorry but, uh, <laughs> i think it kind of worked out for me <laughs> um your ncaa career started at stetson but mm-hmm. you moved to Eastern kentucky and you had a good couple of seasons there mm-hmm. um how did your game change uh w- when you went to eastern kentucky Mm-hmm. Um, so originally I was never really a, like a point guard I'm still kind of learning that um, I've only been playing it for maybe two years or two or so two years like seriously um, but uh, when I got to Eastern you know my coach Coach Neubauer um, he really just kind of let me just be the best I could be at whatever position it was whether it was point guard or um, shooting guard or wherever wherever I was just most effective, but uh, not until after college. That's when I really, you know, started seeing the growth and seeing, um, you know, the versatility and being able to play point guard. Um, at that time, you were really good at scoring, mm-hmm. but uh, when when we look at the stats, because that's usually how we evaluate mm-hmm. the games, that's about the time when you start ex- accelerating uh, in, in other uh, elements of the game as well. You you get a lot of assists. You get an, uh, a lot of rebounds. You get a lot of steals. Mm-hmm. So it it seems like your game seems became like you discovered defense. Yeah, and, and <laughs> your beca- game became more aggressive. Yeah, uh-huh. was it something that had to do with the organization or you individually? Well, yeah. Uh, like I said, at, at Eastern, we play really aggressive defense. So uh, you know, that's just that's just kind of like a, a lost art to the game. Like everyone wants to score and everyone wants to, you know, of course, make a lot of points, but you know, I, I always wanted to get a lot of steals because uh, I don't know, it, it was it was just fun. Like I take it upon like a personal challenge to get steals or to just be really good at defense. And uh, it, at, at, a, at one point that was the best thing I did. I mean, I, I was able to score, I was able to, you know, be a good teammate, be a, you know, a good passer or a shooter or whatever. But one thing that never changed was my defense. So the one thing I really hang my hat on is playing good defense, whether offense comes or you have a bad shooting night or whatever, maybe not in good shape or whatever, but defense, defense is always there. You know, it's effort and it's what you really put into it and hard and everything. So, you know, 
So yes. basically, you became dangerous on, on both ends yeah, of the court. So, yeah, I mean, you don't really see too many ple uh, people who play both ends really hard. So uh, why not me? <laughs> yeah, I'll take it upon a challenge to do it myself. Who are the most important coaches during your early age besides your father? Oh, all of them. Um, every coach I've had, my father. Uh, I have a coach back at home, Coach Pep. All my... Um, youth coaches growing up. I mean, every single coach has, like I've taken something from each coach and I've used it and it's molded me to the person I am and the player I am today. Your brother is playing basketball? He's not playing basketball, no. no. So he's not your competition, huh? Not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. I hope he sees this too. I'll beat him. <laughs> usually w w when we have uh, big families with, with a lot of uh, kids, mm -hmm. uh, it's the internal competition within the family that that builds up so we have many examples with, with even all-star athletes mm -hmm. um, i remember th that one interview when um, reggie miller was talking about uh, who was his uh, biggest competitor and that he was unable to win against his sister yeah. for quite a long time now not many people know her story but she she didn't Back in the days, there wasn't WNBA and uh, she had a really bad injury and had to mm -hmm. finish her career too soon. But like she had 216 points in, in, in one game. It was ridiculous. She was uh -huh. she was playing and at one point in time, she was playing even for a male team uh, in a professional league. Uh -huh. It wasn't NBA, but yeah. you know, it, it was a, a big deal. Yeah. Uh, we've seen uh, that uh, you also have a big family what's what was your dynamics with, within the family um so i'm i'm the middle i have i mean it's just three of us i mean i have two brothers an older brother and a younger brother um i have lots of cousins and stuff but uh as far as my immediate family i have an older brother and younger brother um we're pretty spread out in age so like i never really felt like i was a middle child like i Although I had a chance to be the younger child, and then I was able to be the like the big brother or the younger brother, and then the big brother. Um, but no matter what, there was still a competitive nature or spirit. That's within my whole family. Um, when I was younger, playing basketball against my older brother, of course he would always beat me, <laughs> and I wouldn't like it until it got to a point where I could beat him. But then my younger brother came, and then I would just always beat up on him. But um, our family, no matter if it's my aunts, uncles, cousins, anyone, we're all we're all competitive and trying to beat someone at something, whatever it is. Um, in your uh, last season uh, within uh, the Kentucky team, you mm -hmm. were leading NCAA Division One uh, in steals, which mm -hmm. is kind of a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, what that meant for you? It meant everything. Like I said before, like defense is huge for me, so. To be able to, uh, you know, to lead the country in steals at the time, I mean, it was, it was, it was great. I mean, uh, I feel like defense on defense, that's like the one area you're able to be selfish without like harming the team in a sense. You, know, you get steals that can only help the team if, of course, if you do it within the dynamic of defense. But uh, you know, that's the one. This is one thing I just really wanted to set my set myself a goal for, and I was able to achieve it. Especially from your position, still from your position, yeah. it's fast break, one yeah. zero, easy two points. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, Corey, uh, you were close to NBA and NBA, and you trained with uh, Boston and Toronto, right? Mm -hmm. So, can you? Uh, what does a day uh, on an NBA training camp uh, looks like? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I mean, I wasn't really high up in the like, I guess, the NBA team or whatever. So, my day would be basically just like double training, like uh, come in twice lifting some individual work and you come in as a team and you practice. how many players is there on the court i think that at that time there were maybe 18 to 20 players there um of course they have a set number for the roster and then the, the rest is kind of like a tryout but uh yeah, th this was basically preseason yeah, and summer yeah, league and yeah. everything so all the big stars are there they're all there um they're all working when i was at boston of course um they're all working training who, who was there uh, at the time, you have uh, Marcus Smart, you have Isaiah Thomas, uh, Jay Crowder, you have uh, Amir Johnson, uh, Terry Rozier is a rookie. I mean, it was. I mean, all sorts of players were there. The whole team was there, and uh, 
it was a very competitive environment, very professional. You know, you get in, you do your work, be professional on all across the board. And uh, it was a real eye opener for me um, just to see how all the professionals go about work, go about their business. And uh, I just took a little what's, piece. What's different in terms of organization? How, how does it work, especially uh, for someone who is not a star player on the team, but has potential? Mm -hmm. What do you so? What do you mean exactly? How does your day work? What what does the club provide for you? What's the their mm -hmm. plan for you? So it was actually it actually wasn't bad, you know. You know, you hear some stories where maybe you don't have a rebounder or maybe you just have to do everything by yourself, but I was very much involved and had my own set of rebounders and you know, you get your own personal basket or, you know, everything is pretty much taken care of for the most part at Boston, at least. Uh, I've heard different stories, but for the most part, I felt like I was on the team. Like I, I felt like I was on the team when I was when I Well, was you were on preseason roster. Yeah, yeah. You played a couple of preseason games. Mm -hmm. You were cut within the last couple of days, but mm -hmm. that wasn't the end of the story. You, you were selected for the Back then it was called NBDL, now it's mm -hmm. G League, G but League, you yeah. were part of the G League team for the Celtics yeah. that year. Mm -hmm. And you you played some good minutes, you mm -hmm. had some really good games. Yeah. Uh, turned out you, you didn't stay with the team, but you know, uh, it wasn't the end of the road. Mm -hmm. There was an additional option for you and um, that team uh, that played in, in, in G League, they changed their name, but mm -hmm. uh, that season was really good. You had some really good results. You were, I think, third, second or third in terms of uh, winning odds mm -hmm. uh, during that season. And you were one of the few best players on, on the team. Mm -hmm. So what's your experience with, with G League? How does it work? What's the, what's the structure of the whole thing? And, and how was it for a young player? You were just coming off the university. Mm -hmm. How was it for you in, in terms of forming you into a professional basketball player? Okay, so from the time I left college to the time I went to the G League or the D League at the time, <laughs> I mean, it was like from college to like the ultimate pro, like NBA to then G League. I mean, it was just like a big swing. So, you know, like I said, the NBA uh, training camp, everything's taken care of, everything's there, the nicest, everything, chef everything you go to g league and it's like okay like <laughs> tape yourself <laughs> take, yeah like <laughs> not that many rebounders maybe you have a gym at a certain period it, it's it's a grind but it felt like it felt like university again so it, it was something that i wasn't like i was already used to so it wasn't like a big deal but to leave the nba and to go back down to the g league it was like man i really i really miss i really miss the nba but uh it wasn't bad um it's just a time to the G League. Everyone is set on one goal to get to the NBA and to, you know, achieve their dream. So it's a grind. Like every day is a grind. It's not the nicest facilities. It's not the easiest travel. It's not, it's not, everything's not plush. But I mean, it, it, like I said, it, it, I use it to fuel my professional career. I know. I used it to to learn how to work, how to go about business, how to go about professional life and everything. So, in, in, did you level up your game in any way during that time? Yes, yes. I at from the time I left university to G League, I basically reconstructed my entire shot. So in university, I had a completely different shooting form. It was pretty funky looking, um, and I knew to be a better shooter, I had to I had to change it. So. From university to G League, I changed my whole shot, and then from then I just kept kept growing. Corey, your first stop in Europe was Ostende mm -hmm. in Belgium, mm -hmm. and uh, Rashko Katic was there. He is mm -hmm. an uh, ex Crvena uh, uh, Zvezda player, mm -hmm. also his friend of mine. Mm -hmm. Langston Hall was there for a mm -hmm. short time. Why, why, why Ostende? Um, it's just a ran. It's a well ran, organized club. Um, I knew it was it would be a good place for me as a, a rookie in Europe uh, to play, to learn everything. Uh, the coach Dario uh, Roscoe was there, Kudijo was there at the time. Um, 
Marco Keslich stopped there for a second. Um, I mean, there were just a bunch of professionals who have been there, done that, been at high levels, played at high levels. So I knew it was a good opportunity for me to get my feet wet, uh, go through rough times, adjusting to just being away from everyone, like really, really away from everyone. And um, it was just a, a good place to to get comfortable and, and be and have a, a good start to a, to a career overseas. How did you like the situation in, in Europe? It's a, basically a different game. Everything is, yeah. is different. Although the goals are, again, quite high. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're playing an NBA team, you, you don't have too high expectations in terms of, I mean, there, there are always a couple of teams who are chasing the championship but for most of the teams you don't really have to win every game it's not that kind of pressure mm -hmm. then you go to a standard where you basically lose maybe a few games during the season maybe three games a year maybe yeah. yeah and it's different the dynamics and everything is is different and the organization is different from from my perspective i think that um in in, in europe it's more about teamwork mm -hmm. than about individual players of course yeah. everyone gets their time individually with, with the coaches and everything but i think it's it's more about teamwork and that's something that many people coming from from the states are not really used to how was mm -hmm. it for you uh so there like you said like you go there and you you may lose maybe five games a year uh you're just much better than everyone else in the league there but also that's that's another challenge in itself because you know every time you play a league game everyone is gunning for you everyone is trying to you know trying to get a win so you know you can't really take a night off because you know that uh everyone's going to bring their best performance when they come to play you so and there are always clubs that are close yeah yeah, yeah. it's one practice per day there or two uh it depends it depends so at that time it was the first year of champions league so Sometimes we would have one practice, two. Towards the end, we had two practices for sure. And Dusan Djordjevic was there on the point guard or not? Yep, he yeah. was there. And uh, another thing, like, because it's so good, you basically are in, like, competition with yourself and the year before because you don't – I know when I was there, I was like, I really don't want to be the, on the team that didn't continue the streak. I don't know what streak they're on now, but I think at the time when I was there, we won either five in a row or six in a row. And then same as a cup. So I know I just didn't want to be on the team that didn't win anything or it broke the streak or something like that. So that was always the Correct. question. Again, the same question. Next season you choose Israel. Why Israel? Hapoel mm Hala? -hmm. Yeah. Uh, again, it was just another step. Um, I had a friend who played on Holon um, who had nothing but great things. Uh, he had nothing but great things to say about. Can you compare the league to, to Belgian league? Um, I think there's a little more depth where there's there's more uh, teams that are good in Israel. Um, the play style is different in Israel, though. But uh, choosing Israel was the was the was the way. Um, choosing Holon was the way. Um, you stayed there for two seasons. I did. Um, so I went there my first year, and I actually got injured. Uh, I injured my knee and broke my hand. Um, so I didn't really play, and I also didn't play that well my first year in Israel. Um, so I went back for a second year, and it was just a year to prove myself that I can play, I can do everything, and just yeah, really prove to, prove to everyone that I Your that I first played. year, you had uh, a couple of uh, American players, mm -hmm. Glenn Rice Jr. Mm -hmm. uh, so you weren't the first mm -hmm. option. But the second year, uh, when you won the MVP of Israeli League, mm -hmm. you were the first option and, and team played really well. Mm -hmm. um, what did it mean for you to be the leader of the team? Um, I mean, it was it was something, it wasn't something new. I've always been one to lead by example, not really vocal. I'm, I'm kind of a shy, quiet person, but uh, to embrace that role, it was again, another challenge. Um, it was something I just wanted to prove to myself, prove to others. And uh, I mean, I think I did a pretty good job. Um, at the beginning of the year, though, I wasn't even, I wasn't 
the um, I wasn't even the number one player. Uh, the top player was a guy named Khalif Wyatt, who's great, great basketball player. And uh, unfortunately, he went down with some injuries. So I just naturally kind of stepped into that, into that position. And uh, unfortunately for him. Yeah, uh, I mean, like, he's like I say, he's a great, he's a great player, and uh, he just had some knee issues. But uh, but I just stepped into the role and just wanted to do the best I can, whether it was good, bad, or otherwise, and it kind of worked out. <laughs> kind of worked out for me. That summer, you were on the on the roster for Toronto Raptors, mm -hmm. NBA champions. Yep. Tell us something about it. <laughs> Again, um, after they won the championship, going to summer league. You know, of course, that's not the original team, but you know, once you go to summer league, all the teams want to go and beat the the NBA champions, as if you know the summer league team is was the team that was out there. But it was a pre it was another uh, sense of pressure where you know everyone's going after you, everyone wants to beat you, everyone wants to to. Uh, Jordan to, Lloyd to was there themselves. season before this, right? Yeah, Jordan was there, and he was there summer league too, and he he played his butt off. He of course did what Jordan does. Uh, But yeah, it was a uh, it was a cool experience uh, to be on that team to see how everyone uh, interacted with each other off of uh, a championship and uh, all the players together and hanging out. How and was stuff. it different from your Boston experience? Mm. It really wasn't too it wasn't too different as far as summer league because summer league is everyone is similar to G League. Everyone is trying to prove themselves and prove to everyone in the yeah, world it's basically tournaments yeah, and it's, it's the same not thing. so um that's the only time i had with toronto i didn't like actually go to toronto or anything but um so just i can just compare the summer league experiences they're pretty much the same okay and then you uh decide to come to serbia and mm -hmm. play for for parties in belgrade mm -hmm. um From what I know, you've been to Serbia before. You you had some some games, some before. games here. And uh, what was your motivation to to come to Serbia to play? Um, I think at the time I wanted to play for a, a, a bigger club. You know, a team that was you know more well known from from summer league. There was options of maybe going to Euro League at the time or you know, going to another, another bigger team. But, you know, at the time that was, that was the best fit for me. And, uh, in many cases, uh, players have options to go to bigger teams, mm -hmm. but they will not have enough room to, to do anything on mm -hmm. the court. When you are option 11 or 12 on the bench, it's not really, uh, uh, you don't really get a chance unless someone gets injured right. to show show off what you can. And from from how I see your, your career has been really well structured. Mm -hmm. And every year you move up the ladder mm -hmm. and that's basically how you came to, to Red Star. But that yeah. decision was not an easy one. No, it wasn't. And before that, like, before I got to Partizan, like, after the year I had in Israel, you know, I could have made the jump, the jump to EuroLeague. But not to say that I doubted myself, but I think the more logical step would have been to go to Euro Cup, then go to EuroLeague, you know, just to kind of make a, bit, a, a smaller jump rather than a, a big jump at the time. Um, just to really get a feel instead of, you know, getting completely thrown into the fire and you just kind of find a way with EuroLeague. Um, I think Euro Cup was a, it's still still tough, at the, of course, but uh, it was a, a easier choice to go there and really learn more, uh, be better as a, per a person, a player, or a teammate, and everything um, before making that extra jump to Yeah, to putting Euro yourself League. on the map, basically, because yeah. at the same time, the, the Israeli League is serious league of course but you know if you're not playing tel aviv not yeah, many yeah. people outside of israel know a mm -hmm. lot of a, a lot about you even though you were the mvp of the league which yeah. is always you know a big deal mm -hmm. so uh how did you decide to uh sign for red star uh it's a number of different things uh the main thing was like personal reasons personal reasons within my family at home. Uh, that was a major influence. But uh, the main choice was I just I just felt like I was ready for EuroLeague. Uh, 
and the opportunity presented itself. Um, not many times that opportunity is there, um, especially with a pandemic going on. But like I said, it wasn't easy. It's definitely hard, but it's a choice that I ultimately had to take. Uh, if I wanted to, you know, chase dreams or chase, you know, whatever I've, whatever goals I had set for myself at the time. Corey, this season was hard for everybody, especially for a club like uh, Crvena Zvezda without the fans. Mm -hmm. How was it for you? Oh, it was difficult. Um, you know, here fans are a huge thing. Like, of course, you know that. But uh, a lot of games that we lost, I think if we had fans, be games that we, we win all the time, especially here. Like, it's almost especially impossible. Especially in yeah. EuroLeague. Yeah, in EuroLeague, and especially in Pioneer. Like, it, you just don't really lose games here with fans. <laughs> like, you, it's almost impossible. But um, just without fans in, in general and uh, the, the extra rules and, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm trying to say? Like, all the, the, all the rules and everything that's structured around, like, COVID, where... You know, you take PCR tests maybe twice a week and, you know, you have to go through these and these steps and different criteria and everything. It just made it more challenging where you, you don't just focus on basketball. You have to focus on your health as well. And it was hard to mix mix those two together and uh, not having fans, you know, you know, we're human. Uh, sometimes you just aren't that motivated. Whatever it is, you just don't have the motivation or it's hard to really give yourself like get yourself going maybe it's a rough week rough practices whatever but sometimes when you have those fans you come out on the court they give you that motivation this year there were no fans so you really had to find the motivation really find everything like dig deep within you to you know to find it and still go out and perform well at the start of the season it's looked like uh, friendly games with yeah. the crowds it's weird it like, strange you make a good play and you just hear your teammates, yeah. you hear your coach, like it's every single like gym. every single word he says, you hear everything and <laughs> you, you can know. only bounce on the ball. That's yeah, it. yeah, you just hear shoes and the ball bouncing. It was very weird at first. Uh, COVID situation was tough for everybody and uh, all the people uh, suffered um, differently. It's individual. Mm -hmm. How was it for you? Um, it was pretty mild. Um, I would sneeze a lot. I had a headache, I was tired. I would sleep a lot, um, but for how long you were out? Of, about two game. weeks. About two weeks, I was out, but uh, no crazy symptoms though. Outside of that, it seems like that uh, for you uh, this season has been really good of proving yourself as one of the leaders of the team. Um, in many important games, you you stepped up. You were one of the leaders of the defense with, with Lazic. Mm -hmm. um, it, it seemed like a couple of years ago when we had a similar uh, matchup with, with uh, Lazic and, and, and Jenkins, when you have two people playing hard defense on the court and on, on guard positions, it, it, it really makes a difference. But uh, what? how did you feel uh, with, with the whole uh, pressure of the season and, and the important games. We had EuroLeague where we, we didn't fulfill the expectations, mm -hmm. but still uh, there were many important games that we need to win. And, you know, uh, up until the, 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 the uh, beginning of the last game, game, game against Budućnost, for example. For example, yeah. Big uh, pressure, first time people inside the gym. Mm -hmm. But the, the situation where you basically up until the beginning of the game, you have no idea who will be available to play the game mm -hmm. and you have to adapt and you, you had to adapt your game a lot to the availability of, of other players as well. Basically, almost everyone was out for at least a couple of weeks during the season. Mm -hmm. uh, how was it for you? Um. It was tougher. Uh, it was a lot tougher where, like you said, like you don't know who's going to play. You don't know what lineup is going to be. You don't know. You know. Everything was different. Every game was someone was out or someone was not available. And so for physical players, for, for people who, who put up a lot of energy, it's even tougher if you go 
game after game doing that mm -hmm. so that's why i'm asking how was it you know to to how was it on your body we know now that that you're injured mm -hmm. you, you are not playing your back is really bad mm -hmm. uh feeling right now so uh your body suffers yeah and your mind stands has to stay focused and sharp on, mm -hmm. on these things and you have to be on your you know game 100 so it's different probably from from any other experience you, you had previously mm -hmm. um yeah it was a challenge uh especially physically but mainly mentally where you know you can go into the games and say oh we don't have this player we don't have this we don't have that but at the end you just end up making excuses so i would find myself saying like oh well we could have won or we did this a lot of but it just end up being excuses and we, every game we played and we lost we could have won i i feel like um you know every time we step out on the court it's a chance to win so yeah it was tough but i mean no one's gonna care that we're missing players you, you still need to get a win like that's just that's just how it is which games uh, from this season do, do you remember like uh, something special something special from this year oh uh, away Panathinaikos I remember that um I felt like there were, there was a time where maybe we could have rolled over but we just wheeled together as a team and we got it done which on the road was was big for us um at the beginning of the season this year home against Cheska was huge um away real madrid the the finals i believe finals um i mean there's i can name a bunch but i mean wins and losses you know there's something to be learned in moments from from both how would you compare living in belgrade with just with your previous destinations ostende israel belgrade is really nice like it just it makes it really easy for an american you know uh good food uh good basketball good atmosphere when there's fans uh of course going out like nightlife what about the weather the weather is not my favorite <laughs> <laughs> no, i'm from florida so i'm i'm used to to hot but well, uh, it's, at least it's not russia <laughs> very true it's very true but uh the weather is not my favorite and the traffic i hate the traffic everyone hates the traffic it's <laughs> shit. i hate it <laughs> So, um, being tough on yourself and and on you know, your body in in some situations meant that y y you would do the extra, go the extra mile to play for the club. From from what we heard, in some games you you even uh, asked for special doctor's permission to play the game just to be able to to help the team. Um, What's the plan for for uh, the upcoming summer? And you know you're gonna stay with the club for for another year, hopefully a year with fans. Mm -hmm. um, what's your situation with your injury, and and what's your plan for for this summer? First and foremost, just be healthy. Just get back healthy. Um, that's my number one, number one goal right now. Uh, I don't I don't like being injured. I didn't want to go into the summer injured. All of that. So right now, I mean all I'm focused on is just getting back healthy and getting back in shape and being able to run and move and do stuff. Okay. Cool. What what's up with your new hairstyle? You like it? Yes. <laughs> um it's something different. Uh I was getting tired of the long hair. Um I would, you know, of course, yeah, I would put I, it up. Aerodynamic, right? Yeah, I haven't got to test it yet, though. But um, even when I would put it up, it would still like touch my neck, and I don't, I didn't like that. And <laughs> if I turned my head, it would be in my face, and it okay, wasn't, it wasn't why, my favorite. Why now? And of course, when we won the championship, I was like, you know, why not? And of course, I made like a little bet with some of my teammates that you know, if we win, I just, I'll cut it off. And they were like, yeah, right. And we won, and the next day, I just cut it off. Uh, in in some of when when I did some additional research in in some of the shots from from your previous career, you you looked like this, and uh -huh. uh, you look like a sixteen year old yeah, basically. <laughs> uh, 
and you, you don't look as dangerous, which can be probably good for a sneaky for a defensive player. Yeah. <laughs> um, who would you say uh, throughout your career? Who who would you um, select as your favorite and you know, most important teammate? You can name a few. That's a rough one. That's kind of like so. Like, pick my favorite teammates. Yeah. I can't pick a favorite teammate. That's like saying who's your favorite child. I can't do that. I mean, all all my teammates have been. I haven't had any bad teammates. All my teammates have been my friends. I've had good relationships with them. So that's tough. I can't choose five. Connie, Connie, can you say more about this season? Mm -hmm. uh, you change coach, uh, a lot of players. Uh, we won the the cup. We won the ABBA League. Mm -hmm. All the season now is then. What can you say? It's been a hell of a ride, huh? <laughs> um, it's, this has been a season like no other. Uh, so so challenging. And hopefully, and, it will not repeat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hopefully, but I mean, got the cup, got the Alba League, and now we're going for a Serbian League Championship. Um, I mean, we're, we're still getting trophies, um, but it's been very hard mentally physically you know unlike any other season um so i don't know it's just been it's been hard draining and it's been tough it's easier for you to play on a point guard or, or a shooting guard i think it's easier for me to play point guard yeah i think it's easier uh yeah what's the first thing you're gonna do when you fly to florida the first thing i do when i fly to florida hmm Take your jacket off. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> take everything off. Um, hug my mother, hug my dog, and get. Mm. What kind of dog you got? I have a uh, pit bull lab mix. He's mm. like the softest thing in the world, though. He's like a, a big baby. He's my little boy, though. But uh, get some food, hug my family, and then probably the next day go to the beach, sit there and just reflect and then i'll start doing everything else who is corey walden, walden off the court who is corey walden off the court uh without basketball much much different um you look like I a quiet like, guy huh you look like a quiet guy yeah i'm court. pretty quiet like I'm, i'm pretty quiet guy uh you know who whoever i'm around like if i'm comfortable around them then of course i'll open up but uh You know, for the most part, I'm just a low-key, chill type of guy. Like, don't need much. Don't ask for much. Like, I don't. I don't need. I don't need too much. But uh, I'm a fun guy. I'll say that. I can have fun. Yeah, you seem like a fun guy. Uh, thank you for for sharing this, and hopefully we'll do something fun next year as well. Yep. Uh, stay healthy get back in shape okay. and be ready for the next season because the expectations are going to be high as always. Yeah. And we expect you to be one of our key players for, for the next EuroLeague. Yep, I'm ready for it. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone for, for listening to us. Uh, see you all next week.